Hey guys, Keaton here from TechSmart, and today we're going to be comparing the brand new Apple iPad Air that was just released today to the older generation iPad 4, the fourth gen. So these tablets have a lot in common, but they also have a few quirks. So let's go ahead and check out to see what each brings to the table. So up first is hardware and specifications. So both of these tablets feature a 9.7 inch retina display. It looks great and it comes in at a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a pixels per inch of 264. Now in terms of processing power here, the brand new Apple iPad Air features a A7 chip, which is the first 64-bit architecture chip, followed by the M7 coprocessor. It's clocked in at 1.3 gigahertz and is dual core as the iPad 4, the fourth gen, features a A6X chip, which is clocked in at 1.4 gigahertz and is dual core. Now in terms of RAM here, they both feature one gigabyte of RAM and LTE. Now this is where the bonding and kumbaya train kind of ends here. So the iPad Air features a thickness of 7.5 millimeters. That's absolutely crazy and comes in at a weight for the Wi-Fi version of just a pound, which is 469 grams. And for the cellular version, it comes in at 1.05 pounds or 478 grams. Now for the iPad Air, the kind of big chunky brother here, it comes in at 9.4 millimeters in thickness, 1.44 pounds. So it's definitely a big change there. In terms of grams, it comes in at 653 grams and that's just for the Wi-Fi version. In terms of the cellular version, it comes in at 1.46 pounds or 662 grams. So definitely a massive weight change. So additionally, they both feature a nice full aluminum backing, which just looks absolutely boss. They also charge via lightning, so that's super cool. They both claim 10 hours of battery life, and in terms of capacities here, they go from 16 up to 128 gigabytes, and that's both for the Wi-Fi and cellular models. So for the iPad Air, it starts at around $499 for the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi, and for the iPad 4th Gen, it starts at around $450 on the refurb store, as these are really no longer in stock. And in terms of LTE models, the iPad Air starts at around $629 for the 16 gigabyte model and then in terms of the fourth gen it starts at around $479. So up next is the software side of things. So iOS 7.0.3 is running on both of these devices here. And I got to say, if you've not really used iOS 7 before, if this is kind of your first ever Apple device, you're in for a real treat as iOS 7 here is just absolutely gorgeous. It's definitely a lot different. For example, you get a notification center just by swiping down. You get kind of a toggles menu if you swipe up. And it just is that kind of customizability that we've been waiting for, but we haven't really seen. And I got to tell you, this is just looks a lot more polished, gives those devices a lot more of a cleaner look on the screen side of things as iOS 6 was pretty clunky. So for example, Siri is revamped here, it can now work in cars. She does a lot more, or he slash she does a lot more things as there's multiple gen uh, multiple genders in here. If you want to check out what's new in iOS 7 in full, a link can be found right below that like button. So overall, iOS 7 makes these devices just fly. So one of the big things here with any type of tablet is the display because it's what you're going to be consuming your content on. And I got to tell you, on both of these devices here, it's pretty much the same. They both feature a retina display. It comes in at 9.7 inches, so it's a pretty good display so you can see everything nice and clearly. But one big thing here is it's known as a retina display because it's very hard for the human eye to go and distinguish pixels unless your eye is smack dab right upon that glass. And in that case, you can easily go ahead and do it. But whether you're consuming movies, you know, browsing the web, browsing text, Everything is just so sharp, clear, and it's just what you want in a tablet. That's what I want in every single device. So I'm holding up a color representation chart here, and it's very hard to go ahead and portray in a video how good everything looks. So you should just go down to your local electronics store or Apple store and just go ahead and check out the iPad Air. It's just fantastic. It's so clear. It feels very nice in the hands. And even if you just watch a simple YouTube video or a quick little movie demo they have there, you're just going to be absolutely stunned. So overall, I'm a big fan of the display, and I think it's definitely a big selling point for me as a consumer. So some people live strictly off of specifications and benchmarks, and I'm, I might be one of those people I'm still trying to decide to this day, but we're using Geekbench 3 here to kind of give us a well-rounded score. It tests pretty much everything on both of the tablets here, and it's just going to run a kind of in-depth process where it checks the RAM, what it can do, how quickly it can get back to you, and then just gives you a nice single-core and multi-core score. So once it's done loading, I'll give you the score. So it just finished up here in the iPad 4 received a single core score of 784 and a multi-core score of 1424 as the iPad Air just absolutely destroys that with a single core score of 1481 and a multi-core score of 2687 just absolutely mind-blowing. So up next in terms of benchmarks here, there's this application called GFX Bench, and that's what we're running here. It just is a fight scene pretty much where there's a knight running through some pyramids, fighting some people, and it just gives you a nice well-rounded score in terms of the graphics power on both the tablets. So once it finishes up, I'll get back to you with the score. 
So now that it's finished up, we received a score of 4,403 for the fourth generation iPad. And in terms of the error score here, we received a score of 5,543. Pretty mind-blowing and definitely a worthy upgrade if that's something you are highly considering. So one thing tablets and tablets and tablets are starting to feature is cameras, and they're starting to become good, so watch out. So I did a few test photos here with some video with the rear camera, the front-facing camera, and I think it looks good on both tablets. They're actually the same camera on both of them. Nothing has changed at all. So just to run down a few specifications here, they both feature a 5-megapixel EyeSight camera with 1080p HD video, and it features an f2.4 aperture on there, so it's not the widest of widest angles, but it's pretty good. And on the front it features a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera with 720p HD video so that's going to be good for selfies, FaceTime, Skype, etc. And one thing that I really like in what they've done with the camera, they've kind of given it a new look but kept it very simple. You can add some filters, crop it, things like that before and it all comes down to iOS 7 being awesome with the camera. So one of my favorite categories is new features. So I gotta say the iPad Air is insanely light. It's almost about a half pound lighter than the iPad 4. It almost makes you feel like the iPad 4 was fat, but we didn't notice. The A7 processor with 64-bit architecture and the M7 co-processor just make this tablet absolutely fly off the doors. And whether it's browsing the web, playing games, it is all so snappy. And I love a tablet that is responsive when you want it to be and not when you have to wait and let the game load and let the text load. This thing just gets it done when you want it done and it's displayed on a gorgeous screen. Some other things like running iOS 7 on both the 4 and the Air and followed by Siri just being absolutely awesome and not laggy and just bad as she usually is, it just really makes this experience pleasurable and kind of made this tablet what it really was in my testing. So last but definitely not least here is battery life. This in conjunction with the display, those are pretty much the two main features of any type of device. And Apple claims around 10 hours of battery life for both the Air and the 4th Gen. I was able to receive around 9 hours on both devices using it leisurely. And then when I was going to go ahead and use it harder, play some more games, browse the web a little bit more, and just watch movies, I was able to receive around 7.5 hours to 8 hours on the Air and around 7 hours on the 4th Gen. So that's still pretty good and it'll definitely get you through more than a day's worth of use. So overall, if I had to make a recommendation to any type of consumer out there, I would highly recommend the iPad Air. It's a tablet I love, and I've had it for almost a day now, we're getting there, and I have nothing but positive things to say about it. Maybe the only negating thing is there's not a better camera on there, but that's just a minor little bump that I would personally like to see on tablets. But this thing flies, the A7 processor with 64-bit architecture, the M7 co-processor. What else do you really want? A tablet battery life is great. The screen looks fantastic. New colors, it's thinner, it's lighter. I mean, that's all I really want in a tablet, and I think any type of consumer is definitely going to want it, and it's definitely worth the upgrade from a fourth gen or any other generation of an iPad or even any other tablet for that matter. Now the only reason I can really recommend the now discontinued iPad 4th generation is if you can find a great deal in it. Now if you go ahead and check out the refurbished store, if you want to go ahead and check that out, link can be found right below that like button. There's some pretty good deals on the cellular models and the Wi-Fi models. It's probably around $30 to $50 off. So to justify $50 or $30, just go with the 5th gen or the Air. It's going to be worth it in the long run and you'll get a few more years out of it with the latest and greatest specs. Thank you guys so much for watching this video where we directly compare the brand new Apple iPad Air to the previous generation, the Apple iPad 4 or the 4th gen. If you guys did enjoy this video as much as I did making it, as it was a blast comparing both these beasts together, go ahead and give this video a like or a thumbs up. It's the one where the thumb, it's on your hand, is pointing up as it lets me know you guys did enjoy this video and it really helps the channel out a bunch. Also go ahead and give this video a like if you guys want a few more giveaways as I'm definitely going to go ahead and incorporate some towards the holiday season due to the support you guys have given me. It's absolutely tremendous and I truly do appreciate everything you guys have given me. Drop me a comment down below letting me know what you think of the brand new Apple iPad Air. Would you buy it? Are you even considering it? Or are you considering other tablets like the Surface 2 or some of the Samsung tablets? Finally, go and subscribe to the channel if you guys want more Nexus 5, iPad Mini 2, Mac Pro, and more iPad Air content as I would love to go and give you guys some more videos. And by subscribing, you'll be first to know when I produce a brand new video. Thank you guys once again, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.